This is a FizCast on two-dimensional motion. Pause the video and read through the question carefully. Now you've done this, you understand this is a problem involving a car which is travelling horizontally at 31 metres per second and it goes straight over an edge of highway which has been cut away by a raging flood which has created a 1.7 metre deep gash in the road. And the question is asking us how far, what is the distance from the edge to where the car lands. Often a good starting point is to draw a diagram representing what's going on. So this point here is my car, it's travelling with some initial velocity and it's going to reach a point on the road where there's no more road left and there's a 1.7 metre drop. This is the gash which is created and the car is going to leave the road and travel in some motion falling down and eventually hitting this spot here. What we want to find out is the distance from the edge of the washout. So this distance here is what we're after. So this helps us visualize the problem. It's also a good idea to then be able to write down everything we know about the problem as well. One of the assumptions we can use is that the car is going to be in free fall once it leaves the cliff. So the only acceleration acting on that object is going to be the acceleration of gravity. And we can see from the picture that this is two-dimensional motion. So the object is going to have some horizontal motion and it's also going to have some vertical motion. A good starting point is to then put in a coordinate system. Let's choose X going to the right and Y going up. And what other bits of information do we know? We don't know how long this takes. We don't know the final velocity of the object. So how can we approach the problem? One thing we realize is that when an object is under free fall, the time it takes for the object to accelerate 1.7 meters downward is going to be independent of how the object is traveling in the horizontal motion. We can decouple the vertical motion from the horizontal motion. So one strategy would be, let's find the time it takes for an object to fall 1.7 meters and then we can use that time to find out how far an object takes to travel horizontally at 31 meters per second. So that distance there is going to be given by the velocity times by the, the time that we solve for. So as there's no acceleration in the horizontal direction. So what we can start off with is looking at our equations of motion. Recalling my equations of motion is helpful because this is a constant acceleration problem. We have acceleration in the x direction is equal to zero, and the acceleration in the y direction is that given by gravity. Now because of our choice of coordinate system y going up, that's equal to minus 9.8 meters per second squared. So our strategy was to try and solve for the time to cover this vertical displacement. So I think what we want to do is use this equation here. Remembering if I'm looking at the vertical motion, I can rewrite this equation in terms of y. So to start with, let's say that my vertical displacement is equal to my initial vertical velocity times time plus half times my acceleration in the y direction. And I won't put this in as a number just yet, times the time squared. So we'll leave everything as variables and then try and rewrite this in a way which allows me to solve for t. Now even though this is a quadratic equation in time, I notice in this example here that my initial horizontal velocity is equal to 31 meters per second, but my initial vertical velocity is equal to zero. My car is traveling straight over the edge, it's traveling horizontally. So that actually means that my velocity here is zero and this simplifies my rearranging this equation for t. So now I can write that, that uh, t squared is going to be equal to my displacement y minus y naught multiply by two to bring the half across the other side, divide by my acceleration in the y direction and I'll take the square root of the whole thing to get t by itself. That of course introduces uh, positive and a negative solution. 
and the negative solution can be attributed to if my object was to start back here in negative time and travel up to this point. So because we know that we can ignore that negative solution, it's the unphysical one that we don't want to worry about, we'll just keep the positive solution for now. Okay, so at this point we can put some numbers in. How long is this going to take? So I've got the square root of 2 and y minus y naught, remember that's my final position minus my initial position, is that equal to 1.7 meters? Let's have a look at my coordinate system. Remembering I chose that y going upwards was going to be positive. My initial position is at the top here, my final position is at the bottom. So in fact y naught as a number is going to be larger, and more positive than y. So that actually means that this would look like 0 at the top here and y would look like minus 1.7 as a coordinate. So minus 1.7 subtracting off 0 is still negative 1.7. Now that may look a little bit worrisome that I've got a minus sign in a square root. However, if we put the correct acceleration in, realizing that the acceleration in the y direction here is minus 9.8, and those two minus signs will cancel and it'll be mathematically fine. Popping that into my calculator, I find the time is equal to 0 0.589 seconds. So we know the time it takes for my object to fall vertically, 1.7 meters. That's also the time it takes for the car to travel horizontally to this point here. So what about the distance? Well, to solve for that distance there, we can use this expression once again. So I've now got my horizontal displacement is equal to my initial velocity in the x direction times the time it takes, plus a half my acceleration in the x direction times 2 squared. Now importantly this equation simplifies further because the acceleration in the x direction is 0. So we can substitute in our velocity, which is 31 meters per second. It's positive because it's in the same direction as positive x and we can put in our time, 0.589 seconds. That gives me 18.3 meters. If I round that to two significant figures, I could just call that 18 meters. So at the end of this problem, we should always assess, ask ourselves, does this make sense? So unitly, you can see this is correct. Velocity times a time is going to be a distance, which is good. Am I expecting it to be positive? Well, yes, if uh, x is positive to the right, that means that this value here, my initial x position, I could call 0. The final position would have to be 18, so that makes sense. What about if I travel faster? What if my initial velocity was larger? Would that change how long it would take to get to this point here? If we look at this expression here, we can see that the time it takes for my car to hit the bottom of the, um, the washout region is independent of that initial velocity. It doesn't matter how fast I go, still takes the same time to fall 1 point meters per second, as long as I'm traveling horizontally. Setting this to zero means that my initial vertical velocity is zero. And the distance that I cover, well, if I'm traveling faster, then yes, I go a, a larger distance horizontally, but I do this in the same time. The time doesn't change.